Hello YouTube, my name is Daniel and welcome back to another video. This is the second video in my latest Android series where I'm building a music streaming app using Jetpack Compose and Firebase. In the first video, I demoed the application, set up Firebase and also set up Android Studio. In this video, we'll be setting up our project structure, dependency injection framework, which is Hilt, our constants file and our models. So to get started, we're first going to work on our dependency injection framework, which is Hilt. Um, the dependencies will already be in your build.gradle file. So if you go to your build.gradle file, you should see these dependencies here for Hilt. And you should also see this plugin here. And in your project gradle file, you should see the Hilt gradle plugin. So to get started, we need to create a new package on our main directory, which will be util. Inside the util package, we will need a application class, and this is the class that will run as soon as the app launches. This will be called application. This will need to extend the application class and be annotated with at hilt android app. And this needs to implement the application class android.app we need to instantiate that class and now we should be able to access the onCreate method. So onCreate and in here we want to initialize Firebase and we can do that by using Firebase app dot initialize. Just make sure we run that import. Initialize app and pass in the context, which will be application context. In order for Firebase to be initialized successfully, you will need to download your google.json file from your Firebase project and place it in the app directory. I can show you right now. So if I go to the project and go to app, you can see my Google services.json file. This can be downloaded from your Firebase project by going to the home page and selecting your app and then the settings icon and then scroll down to your apps, and then you have this Google services.json file. And so once we have our application class set up and add say with Hilt Android app, that will tell Android Studio that this project is using Hilt, and it will also be in our manifest under Android colon name, so just make sure you have this class here for your application. Next, we need to set up our injection class to provide our dependencies to our app, we we'll only have one dependency, which would be our repository, which we are yet to create, but we can still get started on the actual class. So if we right click on the util package and select new Kotlin class, this will be an object. And this will be called injection. Now we need to add some annotations for Hilt. The first one will be at module, as this is a Hilt module. And the second one will be install in singleton component, as we want our dependencies to be provided as a singleton. And we can do this by using singleton component class. And for the moment, we're not gonna put any methods in here. This is just ready for when the repository is built. Next, we can set up the constants. And to do this, we will right click on our util package and select new Kotlin class slash file object, and we'll call this constants. And this will be where we store the constant values in our app, such as the strings used in Firebase. Our first constant will be name, which will be the name of the song. So name. Name. Next, we have the artist. And to use the correct formatting, this should always be done with the variable name in capital letters. And this will be artist. Next we have file name. And these need to be exactly the same formatting as the fields you're using in Firebase. So inside your storage, I'll just show you now. So Firebase database, these need to be the exact same format as these fields here. So you can retrieve the correct details. The next one will be album art
followed by the collection, which will be tracks. So this will be all in capitals. And then for the other folder, we will have the album art all in caps. So art all caps. And this one here starts with a lowercase a. And to get rid of this error, we'll just separate the two words here. So that is all of our constant files. We have the name of the track, the artist of the track, the file name of the song, the album art, the tracks collection, and also the album art folder. Now we've got our constant setup, we can go ahead and set up our models. So we want a new package for that, which will be called models. Our first model will be our track class, and this will be a data class. And now we just start laying out the values. So our first value will be our image, which will be a string, as this will be the URL of our image for the album art. Next will be the index number of the track. So if this is the first track, it will be one. If it's the second track, it will be number two. So index, which will be a int. Then we have the song title, which is a string followed by the artist, which is also a string. The track URL, which is the URL for the file, which is again a string. A var value, which can be changed, and this will be is playing, just so we know whether this song is playing or not. This will be a Boolean value. And the last value is the file name. So now we have created our Kotlin data class. We want to add an extension method. And this extension method will be converting the details that we get back from Firebase into a track data class. The details we get back from Firebase will be in a query document snapshot. And this is essentially a key value hash map where we can retrieve the details. So we can start this extension method using the keyword fun and then the class that we want to add this method to, which is query document snapshot. And we will call this method to track. And this will require some parameters. The first one will be the index. The second one will be the image URL, which will be a string. Next, we have the track URL, which is another string. And this will return a track. These two details here, we have to request separately when we actually get the query document snapshot. So we need to send off a request to get these details and then we can turn the snapshot into a track. This will return a track class. The image will be image URL. The song title will be this dot get string and then we can pass in the field name which is constants dot name if that fails if that returns null we want to just pass in an empty string so this so using the this keyword here references the query document snapshot and all we are saying is we want to get a string from our query document snapshot with the name of name. And if you can't find that, we will initialize this as an empty string. Next, we need to do the same thing for the artist. So I'm going to duplicate this line three times. So the next one will be artist and the field identifier will be artist. Next will be the file name and that will be constants.filename. The is playing value will be set to false initially. Then the index will equal the index we pass the parameter. And then the track URL will be the track URL. 
and that is the extension method completed. And now this method has been completed, we have finished this file. The next class we are going to create is a enum class, and this is to provide options for our music player. So if we want to play a song, pause a song, or skip to the next song, or go back to a previous track, we'll use this enum class. And an enum class is a specific class that you can use if you want more options other than true or false. So to create that, we'll go to our models directory and select new Kotlin class slash file and then enum class. This will be called music player option. And this will just have three options, which will be play for when we're playing a track, skip, when we want to skip to the next song, and previous, if we want to go back to the previous track. And that is the enum class created, which we'll use later when we actually start creating the UI. So now this enum class is created, I'm going to end this video here, guys. Just before I end this video, just make sure you go to the main activity and add this annotation here for at Android entry point. And this is just telling the compiler that the main activity is using Hill. Um, if you don't add this, you will not be able to start the app. So just make sure you add this annotation. But yeah, that is it for this video, guys. In the next video, I'll be setting up the repository and the view model. So definitely check that out. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Please like the video and please subscribe.